What's the word, y'all? We are back. One Take Kenny is here in full effect. We just talked about Porzingis, Marcus Smart, Tyus Jones being traded for each other. And now we got Chris Paul being a, a Golden State Warrior. This hit us 12 minutes ago. That's how quick we get to the basement when we start the film. 12 minutes ago, and we find out the real details is a 2030 first round pick that is protected. It is a 2027 second round pick. It is Jordan Poole, and it is Ryan Rollins. That is the cost of of Chris Paul? I don't know how to feel. Now, I've, again, this happened 12 minutes ago. I haven't looked at no forums. I ain't even looked at Twitter other than seeing Shams' post, right? I, If I am a Warriors fan, I am very skeptical of this, man. I, I, this is, is this the first, this is the first move of Mike Dunleavy Jr.'s tenure as the guy over there after, this is not a Bob Myers move. I'll say that right up front. This is not a Bob Myers move. You traded a young 24-ish year old player for a guy that might be, uh, you, you, well, he's on the last leg. We watched Chris Paul last season. Y'all know Chris Paul is my favorite player of all time. I like this from the Chris Paul perspective. He gets another opportunity to potentially win a championship, that elusive NBA championship. He's playing for a team that's got a lot of those in recent history. But you trade this young player. And I think actually, I think this might showcase th that there's a disconnect between the value us, us NBA fans might see with Jordan Poole versus what the front office people. Because four years, $140 million, even in the moment, if you go watch those videos where you're talking about these extensions between him, Tyler Hero, uh, I think Anthony Simon signed four year, $100 million, which is less than that, obviously. Uh, we were like, man, this is a lot of money. This is a lot of money. Um, and here we go a year and two and not even. I don't even think the, co the contract starts this year. So that 440 is going to Washington right now. And you might have thought that the, the cost or the, the value of Jordan Poole would be a lot higher than Chris Paul. But obviously, it's what Chris Paul get, was about to get waived two weeks ago. And you, oh, man, I just, okay, take a step back. The, the, this is a, a lot of rambling out of that. If there's one positive of this from the Warriors' perspective or or my perspective of, as a non-Warrior fan is that we're about to see the, the, the one thing that made me become a real Steph Curry fan was the movement off the ball. And now that they have an additional playmaker with Chris Paul, we're about to see a lot, a lot of off-ball Steph Curry. And that's going to be dangerous for the league. But on the other side of things, you have six foot Chris Paul, six couple, six foot three Steph Curry. When those dudes are on the court together, it's, it might be a struggle at that perimeter defense thing. You know what I'm saying? The first move of Mike Dunleavy Jr.'s tenure, man, and I, ooh, I just don't, I just don't know how to feel. Wizards fans get their first round pick after not getting one from Bradley Beal or Chris Dasperzingis. It, it was for Chris Paul. This is how weird the NBA is. This offseason is already going crazy with this trade going down. And uh, now you get Jordan Poole. If I'm the Wizards fans, I feel really good about this. Because it's, it's over the next four years of Jordan Poole's career, there's no real world we're about to be right back to attention. So even if it turns out to be a bad contract or Jordan Poole doesn't hit the next step that maybe you believe he could potentially do, you still got to hit a salary floor. You still got to pay people. And why not take a, a chance on the dude that we saw a couple years ago be really, really good? I mean, Jordan Poole is a quality NBA player with potential attached to him. And you, you didn't give up anything that you cared about. You were trading or waving Chris Paul regardless, Wizards fan. So you take this in stride. Now, does this? I, I hope that this doesn't change their, their philosophy when it comes to the draft in a couple hours. Because I don't want them to pass up on another guard if they believe that that guard is the real deal in a couple seasons. But now we got Jordan Poole and Tyus Jones. We don't need another guard. So let's reach for a small forward, a power forward, a senior, center. Draft the best player available in your eyes and let the rest fall into play because there's, there's no such thing as an untradeable contract even if Jordan Poole doesn't turn out to be the player that you want him to be. I don't know how this looks. This, does Chris Paul become now this super six-man point guard um, in the mold of what Jordan Poole was doing coming off the bench? Because I can't, I don't see it being great to start off with all of those dudes together on the court. Um, but if we keep the Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Wiggins, Draymond, Loon Dog lineup to start off with, that's dope. And now we can see this third stretch of Chris Paul's career because he's gone through a lot. He's went through the years where he was one of the best in basketball. Do not forget that he was fourth in MVP in like his third year of his career. Don't you forget. I know you only remember the last couple years of Chris Paul when he ain't been all that. He was like that. And then once he ended up getting traded to OKC, I thought that was like the second portion of his career where he's more of a vet, can also still perform. Obviously, he made an all-star appearance then. And then now he might be transitioning to a dude that comes off your bench to give you high-quality minutes um, off the bench. But this is a high price to pay for potentially just a one-year rental 
Um, we cannot ignore the fact that Draymond Green punched the hell out of Jordan Poole about a year or so ago. Um, so that probably plays a part. It was like, yeah, we just we just want to wash our hands of that relationship. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jordan Poole was in the air when we were in the NBA Finals and Draymond Green was doing his podcast uh, on the BR app. He had Steve Kerr on one of the episodes, and Steve Kerr was saying we, like he was praising the, the Denver Nuggets about all of their players buying in and not complaining about the situation. Mostly talk about how like Christian Brown, Brown, Brown and Bruce Brown spot minutes in particular series, but when we got to the finals, those dudes played great minutes and basically throwing shots that the young players on his team, it seemed like they can play in a lot. It seemed like they can play in a lot. This I don't this just doesn't feel like a move that Bob Myers would have done last year. Again, we can't just keep comparing it to Bob Myers, but he it hasn't been that long since he left. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm very interested to see what else happens with the Warriors because there's rumors about Kaminga as well. I I would be I would be very pressed if I was a Warriors fan and we decided to trade the entire future for this one last dance. And listen, Steph Curry deserves it. Like, I've made videos on this channel that you need to buy into Steph Curry while you can because he's still a top five, three to five player in the NBA. Like, he's still that good. And they've tried to do this balancing act of we're going to develop this young talent and usher those dudes in as Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and Draymond start to decline. And even though they won a championship while doing that, those younger players that you wanted to build up didn't play. Kaminga didn't play. Moses Moody played a little bit in that title run. Um, uh, uh, Jordan Poole played in that title run, but for the most part, those younger dudes didn't really get that moment, didn't really get it. I, I would be very, very surprised if they decided to clean the house of all of the young talent in order to compete for a couple more seasons, because I do believe that you want to eventually usher some of those dudes in. And and maybe uh, maybe Mike Dunleavy is saying, hey, the guys that y'all drafted here, I don't mess with. I don't think that Kaminga, Jordan Poole, Moses Moody, all the others, Ryan Rollins, are the guys that can be the next chapter. So you know what? We're going to ship them out right now where they got value. Like I saw a report that the Indiana Pacers are involved with Kaminga or interested in Kaminga. Is it true? We'll see in a couple hours. But this trade, on surface level, though, I'm giving the Wizards like a straight-up A. I know, again, it's a lot of money to Jordan Poole, but like what What else are you you're paying? You're not going to pay Kuzma, right? You're not, right? Right? Hey, they might try to bring Kuzma back. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. Um, but you just have money that you need to spend. So why not take a chance on this dude? And again, in a couple years down the line, if it don't work out, you can flip him again. And you got a first-round pick for a dude that you didn't really care about to keep on the team. Chris Paul would say, like, hey, I'm staying on the West Coast regardless. Washington, East Coast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but for the Warriors, I this trade is one of the ones that I need to see it on court first before I really feel about it. My initial gut reaction to this trade from the Warriors' perspective is I don't really like it. But then again, Steph Curry and Clay moving because there's another guy that could get them into their spots. I'm excited about that part. But again, with the idea of winning another championship, Chris Paul is not in a position of need. Um, but but I, I oh oh hold on, Chris Hayes, hold on, live. The Golden State Warriors would not waive Chris Paul and is looking forward to partner with the star to make a championship run. Was that even a question? When this trade broke, I didn't think oh they gonna waive him and do. Hello? Um, all right, let me know what you think. Warriors fans, please, please let me know. Uh, y'all haven't done y'all don't do big trades like this. It's, this is not this is not in y'all DNA. This is not what y'all normally do. Uh, so I'm curious to see what you think. And man, 